Hi everyone, welcome to Games Development. I hope you're all well. I thought I would do a quick introduction to the course video just because some of you haven't done Games Development before and it should help refresh your memory for those of you who have done it. Okay, Games Development is an NPA, which stands for a National Progression Award delivered by the SQA, so it runs slightly differently to your classic National 5 Higher and Advanced Higher courses. Okay, first of all, we want to look at is who actually delivers the course. So within Compute and Science, there are three members of staff, Mrs. Jeans, Mr. McMahon, and Mrs. Norman. Um, and Mr. Stewart, I've listed there because obviously he's the head of the computing and maths faculty. Okay, so if there's any issues, he would be the person who you would go and speak to. Um, this year, myself and Mr. McMahon have got a class each. However, for the purposes of our home learning, just to make everything a little bit more consistent and easier, I'm going to be speaking to you guys for the next um, we while, um, so if you've got any questions, then it'll be me you're dealing with through showing homework. So just pop me a wee message if you have any concerns. Okay, so basically games development is comprised of three main units. Each of the units have assessments, which I'll come on to talk about in a wee second, but this is basically what they cover, okay? So the first unit is called design, and it covers all types of computer um, game design. So games that already exist, we're going to spend a lot of time looking at them and um, a lot of different criteria about them. And we're also going to use that information to then design in, um, our own game. Okay, so we're going to look at things like different game types and genres. Um, we're going to be looking at making reviews for games, thinking about how game design is impacted by the likes of things like target audience and the mechanics and the controls of a game. And um, we're going to talk about media elements. Um, narrative and also a little bit of like project planning and, and how important that is when it comes to games design especially for big industries. The second unit we're going to look at is media assets. Media assets is all to do with how we actually create the different um, graphics, text, animation, sounds, video etc that build our game up. Okay so the whole point of the course is that you um, you build the game as you go. So you then you do the design and you design the game. When you do the media assets you then create your assets and then the last thing you do is put that all together in the development stage. And the development stage is different depending on which level you're sitting and we'll, we'll come on to the levels in a wee second. So if you're level four you're going to be working with Scratch online which is great because you can actually do that from home. If you're level five we've predominantly done that in game maker so um, we might have some issues with that from home we might be leaving the development a little bit later in the year and if you're level six you're going to be working with python and pi game and that falls along nicely with some of the work that a lot of you who are doing level six also are going to do um, in advance higher also within development once we've got our games up and running we need to do a little bit of outcomes on things like testing and evaluating and reviewing our games against our original briefs and that is the whole course there's no end exam so everything that you do assessment wise is um, very very important um, because that's what contributes to you getting your award at the end of the year okay this is the regular year plan however this year we're going to have to be a little bit more fluid perhaps just because of the circumstances that we're in okay Usually what would happen is when you start in June, we would do the design unit from June right the way through and the outcomes for that would be due before the October holidays. Now, it would be my plan that because we're starting early, we can hopefully try to cl claw back a little bit of time there because usually you can see at the bottom of the page there, we tend to do out of the four periods a week, three periods working on theory and one period working on practical. But for some of you, level fives, level six, maybe even level fours, if you don't have access to IT at home, we're going to really struggle to practice our, our practical aspects of games development. So what we might need to do is make the year a little bit theory heavy to begin with and then spend more time when we're back at school, hopefully, um, catching up on some of the practical aspects. So we might be able to claw back a little bit of time there in October um, might not be our due date, it might be before that. We're also going to do a little bit of media assets after that and that should take us from October up till Christmas potentially pre lum time, okay, so we have all of our assets ready to rock and roll and to go into our game. Then the plan is that from January through to April, that's when we, after we've learned how to use the packages, we then create our game and then go on to test and evaluate it in our last assessment. So that's kind of how the year plans out. And um, the great thing about the course is that depending on how you're getting on, you can do things a lot faster. And um, so if you do have, for example, if you're in sixth year, you're doing quite a lot of other advanced hires or higher courses, and you need more time to revise and things later in the year, then you can um, you can you can spread your work about, and you can actually get stuff done a little bit quicker, and then finish the course early and give yourself some time near the end of the year and a lot of my kids did that this year just with the extra time that we gained at the college and stuff so 
Um, yeah, it's in, the ball's in your court, really, but it's a really, really um, nice course. OK, the assessments are kind of split up into the three main areas, design, media assets and development. And regardless of whether you're doing level four, level five or level six, the outcomes are actually the same. They're just um, worded differently, more complex as the levels go up. And obviously you're expected to produce a higher level of work. OK. Under design, the three outcomes are split up into analysing genres that already exist in different types of games, as well as looking at contemporary developments within computing science and the different types of perhaps games, consoles or uh, controllers that are being brought out. Uh, outcome two is looking at game concepts and ideas and how these are changed based on target audience um, and also coming up with our own game concepts for our games. Um, then for the level sixes only, they need to produce a presentation where they present their game and um, and basically what it is that they plan to create at the end of the year. And the last thing is they need to review. You need to be able to review two different games um, based on all the criteria that we've learned about over the course of the design unit. OK, so that's what design is. Media assets is more to do with the actual creation of the assets to use within your game. So you start off by describing the different types of assets, fully understanding what graphics, animation, video, text, sound, etc. is, trying out some of the different packages that we can get access to. Um, you're then going to look at the different packages and the development tools and then assess them on how good they are, what tools they have to make your job easy. And we can be a wee bit creative with this this year. So if we happen to still be doing some learning from home, then perhaps we'll be looking at new apps and stuff on our phones and things and seeing um, if we can use some of them and what tools they've got. So there might be a broader range of different places that we're getting this information from. Um, the last outcome is creating and acquiring media assets. So not only do you need to be able to make some of your own um, media assets, perhaps short videos or sound, but you also need to be able to acquire them from copyright free sources. And we do a little bit on copyright. Um, and then you're going to need to be able to gather all the things you need to create your own game. The last one, development, is obviously all about the game creation. So getting that game working, um, using all of the assets that you've created, basing it on the design that you've previously made, and then submitting that. And then obviously testing your game thoroughly, evaluating it and reviewing it against um, the review status that you looked at when you were looking at the design unit. So it all nicely links in together and flows throughout the whole year so it makes sense for what you're actually doing. OK, communication for this year is going to be really important, especially with us not in a classroom together where you can ask me specific questions. So first of all, I'm going to set up a Teams uh, page. Some of you will have used this already if you were in um, Games Dev last year. If not, I'm going to talk you through in a wee second how that works. But I'm going to create two software um, two games development teams in Microsoft Teams, one for each class. Now, the reason that I'm not doing it as one team is that when we do go back to the school, Mr. McMahon will take over his own class and um, I want you him to be able to monitor that separately from me so that everything doesn't get muddled up. The second thing we'll be doing is obviously issuing all of our work, our links, etc. through Show My Homework. However, for some of the things you might be doing, the files might be incredibly large. So what I might do is, is give you the link to where the files are in Teams, and I'll show you where you can access some of that data by looking at this year's Teams, just to give you an idea of where they might be. Just if there's more things I need you to get access to, rather than attaching all of the documents to my Show My Homework, it makes more sense to put them somewhere where you can get them and continue to use them. Any outcomes when they are due, and that will be not for a wee while yet, but when the outcomes are due, they will be issued as assignments in Teams. And you can give them to me. I can uh, put some comments, mark them electronically, send them back to you if there's any changes. It's a really powerful tool. And we'll continue to use that when we're back at the school anyway. We developed that uh, way of working last year with us being at the college, and it's worked really well. So I'm going to continue to use that from now on in Games Dev. Um, it's really good because you can edit stuff online. So regardless of where you're working or what you're working on, you should be able to access it as long as you have an internet connection. Um, for some of the more extensive explanation lessons that you might come across, um, we're going to be using videos and we've created a computing science at WHS YouTube channel where all of those will get put up. If I've created a video specifically for your lesson, your link will be given in your Show My Homework notification. So you should be able to get that and go straight to the YouTube channel and watch it. And it means they're there as well if you want to go back at any point or if you've forgotten something or you want to refresh your memory, the videos will be there stored so you can go back and have a look at them. There should be a kind of sub channel or thread for games development where all of your videos will be stored. 
Lastly, um, because we still want to share good practice and show off our work and we can't print stuff off and put it on the wall, what I've been doing already and I will continue to do is show good examples or good practice of work through my Twitter page. Um, Mr. McMahon's also got one as well, so feel free to follow him too. But if you follow us, it's not it will allow us to showcase some work. But also the reason for that is that we're going to be sharing um, helpful links, news articles and things on there as well. Okay, So if you have Twitter, I would encourage you to follow it. Um, we won't follow you back, so don't worry about that. Um, and um, you can share stuff with us on there as well, if that helps. OK, so um, yeah, that's the communication. Lastly, the most important thing is really about your levels and knowing what level you're at. Okay, the general rule for this is if you have done um, National 4 Computing Science or you would have done National 4 Computing Science had you continued on to it in fourth year or fifth year, then you would usually go on to do level 4 games development this year. Okay, in turn, if you did National 5 last year and you're maybe moving on to higher this year, my suggestion would be that you do level 5 games devs this year. And in turn, if you're doing advanced hire, haven't done hire last year, um, my advice would be to do level six. Now, this is subject to change. So basically, the work that you're submitting over the next few while will help me determine what level I think you should be. But that's where I kind of base um, my base levels on, my base um, instincts on. OK, um, the outcomes that you sometimes get will look similar regardless of which level you're doing. But as you can notice with the pictures on the screen, this is um, I think it's design outcome two for or half of it actually design outcome two for design um, design sorry and it's for level four level five and level six and you can notice the level four one a lot smaller than what you're expected to produce at level five and I, in turn a lot smaller than what you're expected to produce at level six so just to make you mindful that although the task might look exactly the same um, we're expecting a lot more from you the further up the levels that you go, okay? And obviously, if you're not meeting a particular level, then we could talk about options um, to drop back down and things, okay? Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at. I wanted to quickly just demonstrate to you where you will find all these things. So I've opened up my old um, Teams page, which is here, okay? So this is our a games development teams for this year. You can see we've got all the posts and communication in the middle. So you can submit stuff to me. We can have discussions, etc., etc., on the discussion part under the posts. It's taken a while to load because it's been a bit slow today. Okay, so I can pop up stuff on there. In the file section, that's where you will find any additional documents that I might have popped up. Also, you can upload things to there. So I might, for example, get you to do something as a group or as a smaller team within the class. And I can create folders in there that you guys will be able to edit and share things to. So you can see that Dylan Candlish and Natalie have uploaded different things there. We've got a folder for presentations and stuff. So you can pop it there rather than putting on to show my homework. But I'll make it clear in your task where I want you to put things. OK, and the class and materials that I provide will be in that folder there. OK. And then we've got the assignment section, which is up here. And what it does, if it'll open up for me, is allows me to give assignments to you guys. OK, so the assignments will be able to be used to um, issue outcomes at appropriate level once we've decided what those levels are. I think this wants to load. Um, it allows me to issue um, assignments to you. So they'll come up as a, a notification, a wee assignment for you. OK, and you can see it tells me how many people's handed them in and I can go in, mark them all electronically, bounce them back to you with wee comments saying that they're completed or perhaps that they are um, that they are ready to, you know, that they're marked and they're, they're I'm fine with them. And then you can um, make changes online, which is great, and, and bounce them back to me if you need to. So that's really good. Uh, show my homework should all be set up for you guys. I've got a list of everyone that's in our class and all of us we need to get Mr McMahon's class as well. Um, and I'll get that all set up. Everything will go through your um, games dev classes on show my homework. And then if you haven't seen it already, there is our computing science at Woodmill High School YouTube channel with a bunch of videos I've been using with the S1s to S3s. But yours will appear in there as well. And I'll give you links to them um, where appropriate. OK, so hopefully that answers some of your questions for this year. Um, just be mindful that at the moment, everyone's kind of some of you will know what levels you're working on next year because you've done games dev this year. Other ones might not be sure. So just everything that you hand in, do it to the best of your ability, best quality. I always try to include examples. So use them to help you um, gauge what kind of level your work should be at. And then uh, when it comes to the outcomes, you should be given the appropriate um the appropriate level for your work, okay? I hope you're good. I'll speak to you later. Bye.